thought about this. Are you all ready for the big pivot? And according to ratings, you're not. But the Warriors have to go 2-0 and in the play-in games for the right to play number one seed OKC. And they probably won't beat them. They don't have the depth. LeBron James, well, he was great yesterday. Had 17 assists. Um, they need to win just one of two games in the play-in for the right to play the world champion Nuggets. And they're not beating Denver four times. Nope. Um, I think what it's signaling, starting tomorrow in the play-in games, the Steph-LeBron NBA, it's over. The big pivot is here, officially last year when the Nuggets won. But do we realize how much LeBron and Steph dominated the league? 11 finals between LeBron and Steph in 13 years, and they won a lot of them. The Warriors today, though, are incredibly Steph Curry reliant. The number two score on the Warriors, 18 a game is Klay Thompson. He often came off the bench. The Lakers are good and long, not a lot of great shooters and playmakers. No chance they beat Denver four times. So for the next, for the next two months, are you ready for the new NBA? Oklahoma yes. City, young, deep, with a ton of draft capital. They're going to be great for a decade. Are you ready for Denver? Best starting five in the league, championship moxie with a player in Jokic who's the best sometimes easily in the league. The Celtics, without question, the deepest roster in the NBA, offense everywhere, blowouts everywhere, and they've got all their guys except Tatum locked up for the future, and that'll happen soon. The T-Wolves, well coached, prepared, and Edwards a dynamic star, and it looks like they may move Carl Anthony Towns, but they got Rudy Gobert figured out. Dallas, got to be honest, Luka's the best pure scorer at his age in league history and maybe just ever. He's a walking 33 points if he wants to. Meanwhile, Steph and LeBron are limping into the play-in tournament, one on a completely reliant Warriors offense to Steph, and the other... You're crossing your fingers. AD is healthy. This is the new NBA. It's going to start Tuesday. The play-in tournament counts as the playoffs. The old weird Clippers, Kawhi Harden, no shot to win a title. Warriors, interesting, no real shot to win a title. Lakers long match up with Denver well, but they'll face him in round one. Probably no chance to win a title. It is now more international younger stars and the stars are not just winning games they're the top seeds denver just won a title favored to win another the lebron steph era 11 finals appearances in 13 years is officially over and you're so okay um i don't disagree with what he's saying i don't want to say that it's completely over because the reality is, is this. If the Lakers had a better team and the Warriors had a better team, like like Steph and LeBron are still competing at a high level. Now, I have made lots of videos with a lot of people not so happy about it, um, saying that, you know, it's hard for LeBron to have success in the playoffs. Same thing with even Steph. And that, you know, that because of their age, the playoffs is really exhausting, wears them down. And it's hard for them to have the same levels of success they had, even if they're still competing at an incredibly high level. But here's the reality. If you put LeBron on the Timberwolves, take away Ant and put LeBron up there, the Timberwolves are going to be great. Not a, not a doubt in my mind. And I think Ant is great. Ant's the future. I'm excited for him. But you put LeBron on there, replace them. Because I don't want to just put him on that team with Ant. Because then it's like, well, obviously. Right? Let's take away Ant. The, the Timberwolves will be a legitimate threat. Especially when you have other people that could pick up some of the slack. Like Cat. Um, put, you know, take SGA away from the Thunder. And put Steph Curry up there. And the Thunder are amazing. They're, again, I'm, I'm not going to say that they're definitely in their exact spots or that they'll be better or not slightly worse. I don't really know. But I'm very confident that they're not in the play-in, that they would be way better, that there's a legitimate chance that they could beat the Nuggets or that they could beat the Celtics or that they could beat these better teams. 
So I just I wouldn't be so quick to say that, you know, Steph and LeBron, that that era is over. Um, I forget who said this. You know, Simmons said that he believes that the league that LeBron James might be going to the Sixers, that the Sixers may draft Bronny James. And then you're going to have Tyrese Maxey, Joel Embiid and LeBron James. That is a legitimate. I know a lot of people don't like Philly. I get it. But that's a legit squad. I guess, you know, you're definitely dealing with Embiid, who's injury prone, and LeBron, who's older. But that's a legit squad. If they could stay healthy, that's the real deal. They, I mean, they would absolutely be competitive. And to, to say otherwise is just not true. Um, you know, put Steph on the Sixers and take away Tyrese Maxey. For those of you who don't know, Tyrese Maxey is, is an ascending player. Um, within the next couple, I mean, he's so young, he's only 23 and he's a little bit smaller. So it's a little bit harder for him to be as dominant as some of these other players, but make no mistake about it. He is extraordinary. And if you don't really follow, if you don't really watch like a lot of the games, stuff like that, within the next couple of years, you will absolutely know who Tyrese Maxey is. He'll be a parent, as long as he stays healthy, perennial all-star, one of those games where you're watching, you're just like, can you believe he just did that? I mean, the guy is so fast. It's insane. And he's only getting better. It's, it's really cool to watch. He's just, a, and he's a really nice person. So um, he's, you know, it's, it's, it's who they thought Trey Young was going to be. Um, but so, um, you know, you, you replace him and put Steph on there. And as long as Joel Embiid is healthy, um, they're going to be beasts. So I, I just, I think it's more about the construction of the teams with the Warriors and the Lakers and LeBron again, can only carry a team. Once upon a time, a Steph Curry or LeBron would have been able to average 50 points if they wanted to. They really could. If they just wanted to take that many shots and that many attempts and, and, and go for it that much, they could literally average 40, 50 points a game, right? And they could play, you know, 40 some minutes a game after game after game after game after game, right? They do not have that ability anymore. They do not have that ability to, you know, and if they do, if they can, they can maybe do it like once a week. You know, once every few games because it just takes too much energy and effort. So the reason why these teams aren't as good is because you can't rely on Steph and LeBron religiously to step up. You know, when they were at their prime, you could maybe rely on them 95% of the time, right? Because nothing's ever 100%. So you could rely on Steph or LeBron, you know, 95% of the time. You know, 95 out of 100, they, if you need them to step up and do everything, they can do it. But right now, it's like 65 75 that makes it difficult you know that makes it difficult and when you have them on and they can step up it's amazing and you're like see they still got it but they can't do it consistently that's what it boils down to they can't do it consistently and the exaggerated version of this is if if you have been watching the wars is clay thompson sometimes he looks like oh my god that's the clay we know and love and then there's other times where you're just like ooh, that is not the clay that we know and love it's just the inconsistency. Um, and But they're still great players. They're still elite players. Can they be the leaders? No. You don't think if you took Le Le Jamal Murray off the Nuggets and put Steph Curry on there that they wouldn't be prepared to win? Of course they would. Like, it's like not, there's no doubt. Of course they would. And these days, all these players are teamed up with someone that's legit. So I just think that, you know, to say that the LeBron steph era is over it's over where they can consistently be the main dudes right where it is lebron versus steph thursday night 10 30 let's go right that era is over or the era where we know well of course steph or lebron are going to be you know without a doubt you know they're going to find a way into the finals no it's really like well is AD healthy? How's Clay shooting? Oh, did they draft this guy? Well, this guy, he's kind of been not really developed very well. They're going to have to get rid of him. Or it's, there's, there's other factors at play at this point. Um, so I believe that, you know, a good bet that LeBron and, and, or Steph are going to be there, that era is over. But in terms of just their greatness, there's still going to be more moments of greatness from both Steph and LeBron just not with the regularity that we are accustomed to and i'm okay with that because you know he kind of asked that question are you ready for this and i'm a huge warriors fan you know i've told you guys that before you know i lived out in california and i take pride in the fact that i was a warriors fan before they went on their dynasty before they ever won a championship 
and it was cool it was awesome it felt like you know it was really the only dynasty i was ever truly part of as a fan um and it felt like you were really part of something special and it was really awesome to finally be cheering for the team that is truly on top right that you were just like we are dominant you cannot stop us and it was awesome i mean it it, it was just great um, and hearing everyone say, oh, they're not going to win or this or that. It was like, okay, sure, sure. Mm -hmm, yeah, Steph's overrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just only have them tear it up. You know, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. When everyone was crying about KD, it was like, cry harder. We got KD and we're going to win. And they did. So it was, it was from a fan perspective, it was awesome. But at the same time, I'm also excited for the future. You know, I am definitely, um, because I come from Philly and because I've lived in various places and the Sixers have never truly been competitive you had the whole thing where you know iverson was really good but then once iverson left there was just like nothing going on in philly and that was like before the process and then you had the process and you know that took forever to get going and so like and i love basketball and i was like well i want to root for people and so i gravitated towards the teams that played really good basketball that just played high iq smart basketball and that was back then the Suns with amari stoudemire and you know the spurs back when they had like Kawhi, or even before when they had Kawhi actually um and and so now you know it's like i already find myself hovering and being like okay you know like what are these other teams that i that i really like you know that you know and it's funny if if the celtics and the sixers didn't have such a rivalry like i would totally be rooting for the celtics because you know i love jason tatum and jalen brown you know I, I i and i love boston you know boston's a great city um but i you know like I, i'm pulling for the Pel pelicans to like finally get going um i love um brandon ingram um and you know uh the timberwolves i think are awesome and thunder you know like I, I just like to see good high quality competitive basketball and good people succeed and you know obviously if, unless it's my team i'm not crazy about dynasties um i don't necessarily want to see the dug the nuggets just like rip off three out of the next four because it's just not as exciting it was exciting for the war for me to root for the warriors because i'm rooting for the warriors of course but I, but at the same time, even I was like, well, I just know it's going to be the Warriors versus the Cavaliers. Like, as soon as the Warriors raised the trophy in the air, and they're like, we won, we won. It was like, I just was like, I'm ecstatic. I'm really excited. And then you're thinking about next season. And you're like, well, I already know it's going to be the Warriors versus the, the Cavaliers again. And it was like, that wasn't that exciting. Like, I didn't, I wasn't dying to watch the next season, you know, opening. Like, it just they didn't have that same level of excitement. So I just think, you know, I think it's possible that the Nuggets rip off, you know, the next, you know, go two for two for four, or three for four, or whatever, you know, whatever it ends up being. But I think this is great that the Nuggets are the two seed and not the one seed, that the Timberwolves are right behind and that there's a chance, there's a true chance that the Thunder can make the finals. You know, like, I think that's great. And if they do, that's exciting because then next season, right, there's no reason to believe, well, Thunder is definitely going to do it again or the Nuggets will definitely not make it again. Like, you, you, you don't know. And to me, when you don't know, that's what makes it exciting, right? That's why we watch TV and movies and we love to watch new movies and new TV shows because you don't know what's going to happen. And basketball can get repetitive. And that's why, and a lot of Chiefs fans hate me for this, I was rooting to a large degree to not have the Chiefs make the Super Bowl, even though I had suspicions that they would, because I just want different matchups. I wanted to see Lamar Jackson in the Super Bowl, Josh Allen in the Super Bowl, you know, Houston Texans in the Super Bowl, you know, CJ Stroud. That's a fascinating story. I wanted to see, you know, I was rooting to a degree. I, it was hard for the NFC because I really liked all those stories, but I wanted to see the Lions in the Super Bowl, the Packers in the Super Bowl, but also Brock Purdy. What an amazing story. Like, I love all those storylines. Like, I am a consumer of sports as a whole you know, and so I am a fan as well, right? I'm rooting for the Eagles, rooting for the Sixers, rooting for the Warriors and some of these other teams that I truly, truly want to see win. And there's other games that I'm really rooting for, right? Like when I was watching, uh, oh God, who played the Tampa Bay, the Detroit Lions, I was definitely rooting for the Lions, right? Like Lions, 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 let's go. I became a fan, even though it's not like the Lions are my team. Um, and I do that same thing in basketball, right? If the Clippers and the Mavericks are playing each other, I love Luka, don't like Kyrie. I don't think that they have what it takes. And so like, I'm rooting for the Clippers because it's also a more interesting storyline as well. Like, ooh, can Harden finally make some moves? Like, can Russell Westbrook like actually do anything? What's is Kawhi going to stay healthy? You know, like I would love to see KD be able to make moves in you know near the end of his career. So it's like I root not only as a fan, but then I'm also rooting for just interesting storylines, right? The Nuggets versus Thunder, Western Conference Championships would be exciting, or the Timberwolves, any of those top three teams is, to me is what's going to be the most exciting. I think it's awesome if the Lakers can win that first game 
Um, a part of me is hoping they don't because then we could potentially get a Lakers versus Warriors game, which would be really exciting and would be one of the last hurrahs of the two of them, of LeBron and Steph going toe to toe. But if not, and they win and they play, you know, the second seed, um, and they win, yeah, right. They would, they would solidify the second seed. I, I mean, like, I'm excited to watch that, but I'm also believing that the Nuggets are going to win, and I'll be rooting for the Nuggets, honestly. Not because I'm trying to root against LeBron and the Lakers, but just because I think it'll be better basketball moving forward. Because I think if the Lakers and LeBron end up beating the Nuggets, they would have had to have ex expended the entire gas tank and then some. And by the time they get into the next round, it'll be like no man's land. Like I just And I don't see it being as competitive. It's very similar to what happened that the Lakers had to do when they reached the Western Conference Finals against the Nuggets last season. And by the time they got the Nuggets, they just did not have what it takes, and they got swept. So I'm just always rooting for interesting storylines, good, hard, fun competition. But right, if the Lakers lose, and they now go down to the 9-10, right, because the, the person who then survives that game, whether the 9 or 10 spot or, you know, being that, they then play the number one seed in the Thunder. And again, I'm not so sure that the Lakers have much better of a chance to beat the Thunder than the Nuggets. The only, re the only benefit that the Nuggets have is that they have true experience and they have the true alpha guy who's also 100 feet tall and can do everything in, of course, Jokic, that technically the Thunder do lack, which can technically be um, an issue moving forward in the playoffs or something that LeBron would be able to expose. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. Do you think the LeBron and Steph era is over? And are you ready for it? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here. And I would absolutely love to see part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to. Something that we're really excited to be part of. And I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm and it helps combat all the haters and the trolls thank you so much and see you next time